Welcome back to another DXM. In today's video, we're going to talk about your first unknown. Unknowns might seem a little scary, but if you follow the steps we cover today, you won't have a problem. The main idea behind an unknown is to see if you have acquired all the laboratory skills necessary to solve a problem on your own. That is, to find the identity of an unknown microorganism. This is a primary skill you will use in your profession as a scientist. For example, collecting a patient's throat swab and sorting out what ails them. To start, you'll learn to build a dichotomous key. More or less, it's like playing a game of 20 questions with several yes or no questions that lead you to figure out what someone is questioning you about. In our case, getting the right answer, meaning the identity of the unknown that ails our patient. You'll start by obtaining an unknown sample, called a stock, with a number associated with it. Be sure to write this number in your manual. At this point, you'll really want to focus on keeping your sample sterile, as everyone else will have a different organism, and the risk of contamination is really high. Trust no one. Yeah, work in silence and stay away from everyone. Now that you are in your own little bubble, start by observing the physical qualities of your colony. Remember to use what you learned in lecture, lab, and your textbook to describe it properly. This shouldn't take too long. Now we move on to our flagship stain, the gram stain. Utilize your own notes to see whether it's positive or negative. Remember that the color is based on your ability to stain, thus only compare it to your notes. While observing under the scope, don't forget to identify the morphology of your unknown as well as the arrangement of its cells. Write those down too. There's this little quarter sheet that you will use to have your gram stain graded. This is the only way we grade it. We do not look at anything else of your samples, and it's worth five points. Once you're done gram staining, focus on your flowchart. Depending on whether you answered yes or no, in this case positive or negative, to your stain, as well as yes or no to your shape, you will follow the logical set of tests until you conclude the identity of your unknown. You can only complete each test one at a time. You cannot do multiple tests as this will be wasteful and possibly dangerous. Please note that some of these tests may require you to incubate overnight. For example, the motility ones. And as such, you'll complete your unknown the next session by reading the results at that point in time. Remember, you're not allowed to do any tests any other day. You'll have to perform all these tests in a time limit, usually about an hour. So keep this in mind. Be organized. Don't interact with anyone. Focus. And if you need help, ask. Here's an animated example of what could happen and what you're supposed to do. We'll start our test with a gram stain. Let's say our gram stain came out negative. Now we can safely ignore the positive half of the flowchart. We're now ready to move on by looking at the cell morphology. If our cells were cocci, then we'd be done. But let's assume that they're bacilli. We can now rule out Neisseria asteroides and move on to a capsule stain. Let's say that we didn't observe any capsules after staining. We've now narrowed our search down to two. After this final test, we should have our answer. If swarming is observed, then it's Proteus vulgaris. Let's assume that no swarming was observed. Congratulations! Your unknown has now been identified as Escherichia coli. Good, Good luck! luck.